If you feel like you're about to fail your microeconomics final exam, I'm a tutor and this is how you find the percent share of tax burden between consumers and producers. Before we get started here, if you wanna see where you stand for your actual exam, go take my free practice exam in my bio. It's got 25 of the most common types of problems that professors put on their exams and afterwards you'll get a unit by unit breakdown showing you how you did. All right, with that said, the first thing to take note of when it comes to tax burden problems is where the old equilibrium price lies. That's gonna be the intersection of the the original supply and demand curves. So we'll call this P star. This is the price that before the tax was implemented, this market operated at between consumers and producers. Now with that being said, we gotta understand next what the new price of this good is. That's gonna be the intersection of the demand and supply plus tax curves. Draw a little line over here, we'll call this PT for tax. What I want you to do next here is draw a vertical line down from this point until you hit the original supply curve. We're gonna mark this as P2. I can't think of a better abbreviation for it. Actually, what we're gonna do here, this is gonna be PP for producer and PC for consumers. Because this right here, this intersection of the demand and supply plus tax curve is the new price that consumers are gonna be paying for the good. And when we go down to hit the original supply curve, this is the new price that producers are gonna receive from selling the good. The difference here being the tax amount per unit. Because this also is the vertical distance of the height shift between the supply and supply plus tax curves. So with that being said, we're able to start to visualize Who's paying more of this tax right here? This was the original price, and now consumers are paying way more, and producers are only receiving a little less. In other words, this area right here is the new consumer burden, and this area right here is the producer burden. This rectangle right here is consumer burden, and this little rectangle right here is producer burden. The big like conceptual takeaway here is that the more inelastic curve is the one who bears the majority burden. In other words, the more vertical curve between demand and supply bears the majority burden of the tax. And in this case, the demand curve is more vertical than the supply curve. Thus, we see that consumers bear the majority burden. Without all the technical jargon here, if you're a consumer and you're basically willing to buy a good no matter what the price is and thus have more inelastic demand when the price increases of that good you're still gonna buy it and producers know that so you're gonna bear more of the burden of the tax because you're more willing to pay for the good even with the increased price and that's why the more inelastic party bears the majority burden. All right, with that being said, if you just wish I could walk you through this entire class in one night, I can. Go check out my microeconomics cram kit in my bio. It's got all the concepts and practice problems that I'd walk through with you if I were your tutor the night before your exam. Because the beauty of introductory microeconomics is that it's largely standardized across universities. So wherever you go to school, the microeconomics cram kit can legitimately save your grade if you feel like you're about to fail your exam. Go click the link in my bio to learn more.